And check out Bitcoin on an absolute tear, crossing the $18,000 mark overnight for the first time since December 2017. The chart master called the huge breakout all the way back in June, but now he is saying it could be time to cut back on the crypto. Car Cornerstone Macros Carter Work joins us uh, with the charts. Hey, Carter, take it away. Well, I think that's the right word, a tear. And so the question is, uh, do you reduce or trim into this move? And I think the answer is yes. Let's look at a few charts. The first of three. Uh, this is uh, Bitcoin as of July. And what we have here, of course, is uh, the cryptos right up against the downtrend line, in effect, since the all-time high in December of 2018. Now, if you look at the next chart, we have this very clear breakout. Uh, and that's sort of the, the, the move that is interesting. It's a double, essentially. We were stuck at 9,000. Here we are at 18,000. But you can also see the level we're approaching, which is the former high. Uh, third chart, final chart, and let's talk about it a little bit. In principle, a stock, a currency, commodity, anything uh, that uh, gets back to a former high will often contend with it before exceeding it. And while we're not quite at that high, that high was 19,500, and where today's high was 18,500, we're within five, six percent. So the thinking is here to start to reduce and if and as we were to get as high as the former high, uh, to start to reduce even more. It's very unusual to break out before backing and filling or backing away from a, a prior uh, well-defined spike high, such as we saw in December of 2017, exactly three years ago. Wow. Carter, thank you. Carter Worth at Cornerstone Macro. Karen, what do you make of that chart? Well, I, hard to bet against Carter, right? However, I'm in this sort of for the long term. Early on, I got my money back, and so I sort of feel like I'm playing with the house's money, and the, the, the theory has yet to play out if we do see inflation. I'm a longer-term holder of Bitcoin, so right. I'm hanging on. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, you know I come back with that second video just to make you think. We have CNBC today tells you to sell your Bitcoin. Take some off the top a day before back. Now, guys, do I think this is a coincidence? No, it is not. And normally when CNBC tells you something, you normally should do the opposite. But this time, guys, I think they're right. Remember CME Futures, we did not take the dip at the end of last month. Back, guys, we have to remember that these are futures. The contracts expire. Now, of course, Back has said they are physical, but we know, guys, they're cashing out. Same way CME is cashing out, guys. So the fact is, make sure you're watching out. Make sure you're looking at the indicators. Right now, the volume is still high. So we definitely can take a heinous move down, but we're definitely going to have a roller coaster over the next four days. President Trump ordering a drawdown of troops in Iraq and Afghanistan by January the 15th, just five days before he's set to leave office. The major military move comes as President Trump and his administration refuse to cooperate and coordinate with the Biden administration's transition team. President-elect Biden receiving a national security briefing today, but not from the current government, not from the ones in charge, instead from former national security officials. President Trump's new acting defense secretary and national security advisor did not take questions from reporters after the troop announcement. Four years ago, President Trump ran on a promise to put a stop to America's endless wars. Today, it's just announced at the Pentagon, President Trump is keeping that promise to the American people. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you very much. How can you not take questions? Why won't anyone in this administration take questions? Well, it's a good question. The president's plan would pull out about 2,500 troops from Iraq and Afghanistan, leaving around 5,000 total on the ground. The president's fired defense secretary, Mark Esper, opposed this move directly, called it too soon, dangerous, and opposed by the generals. CNBC's Eamon Javers with us now. We, we, we've been expecting some sort of troop announcement, and here it is. Yeah, here it is, Shep. You know, it all had kind of an end of an era feel today. At the White House, Robert O'Brien, the national security advisor, said that the remaining troops in Iraq and Afghanistan are going to focus on things like uh, defending U.S. embassies and defending U.S. diplomats and ignoring the fact now that a new administration is coming to power in the United States in January. He said that President Trump would like to see all of the remaining troops home as soon as May. 
They'll enable our, our American allies in their important missions in those countries. They'll defend our diplomats and they'll deter our foes. Now, just at about the same time he was saying that at the White House in Delaware, Joe Biden was teleconferencing with defense and national security experts about repairing U.S. foreign policy relationships. But in the short section that was opened up for reporters to see, Biden seemed as focused on putting things right here in the United States as well. We're going to need to reinvigorate our democracy at home, strengthen the coalitions, <clears throat> democracies we stand with, and uh, equip the American people uh, to compete and succeed with a foreign policy that reflects their values and uh, their needs. Now, Biden, who is not receiving classified or intelligence briefings from U.S. government officials, wasn't briefed by anybody currently in the administration. Instead, these were 13 outside advisors. They included Stanley McChrystal, the general who ironically was fired by Barack Obama back in 2010 for his criticism of then Vice President Joe Biden. Also advising Biden today was William McRaven, who oversaw that raid in which U.S. troops killed Osama bin Laden. Chef. Now, guys, it is the official that Trump is pulling troops out of Iraq and Afghanistan. Not all, but some. But guys, we know why they're pulling, because they're getting ready for what? That's right, China. China, Iran, and Russia. You can hear the war drums beating. I did a video, and I told you guys a couple days ago, as far as with Trump making big moves, a lot of you watched it. The ratings was high. Please go check it out if you missed it. But the fact is, guys, we see they are getting themselves in position. When Bill Gates said after the C word, nobody's going to be flying. Why? Because we know he's part of the New World Order. He already knows the plan. Guys, if we're in war, nobody's going to want to fly anyway. It's not just the fourth industrial revolution that's going to change. You have to put in mind that if China is going to take this thing over, it has to be a plan for them to take the United States over. It has to be a plan for Babylon to fall. We clearly see how they're making the Babylon fall. When we went into lockdown, basically that put a stranglehold on the small businesses. And we know a lot of these small businesses, mom and pops, have been around for decades. And they got destroyed. So, guys, just make sure that you understand that all this is orchestrated, all this is planned out for the dragon, for China to take over. Remember, guys, the C word is just a diversion, just a distraction. So it really is just the flu. It's been around forever. It's just a type of flu, guys. But the fact is, is that if you have all these nations talking about a vaccine, that is a distraction for something way bigger. Remember I talked about the PSYOP, the military PSYOP that they're going to put on people and they're going to believe it. Trump is not making all these big moves in the Pentagon and the DHS Homeland Security for no reason when he's on his way out. Now these are effective January 15th. That is five days before his way out. So only thing they're doing right now is letting Trump set it up. And then when Biden gets in, they can play the Hegelian dialectic. It was Trump who did that when he left. It was Trump that set us up to fail. It was Trump what didn't handle the C word. You can see the Hegelian dialectic being set up, guys. Don't fall for it. But y'all have a wonderful day.